is the restaurant owner can do one thing. They can just take it off and say, right, well, wipe that away. Obviously, this went viral on this picture, but they can just get rid of that. In today's business, this is no more. Because we go back to the 8th of June July, as soon as United Airlines had an issue, everyone took to Twitter. And there's some really strong language in this. I hate United Airlines. And this is the problem. The slightest sneeze when it comes to application performance and availability today, that goes straight onto social networks. It's affecting your business straight away. It's a bit like the butterfly effect. One person's perception of performance can become a big issue very, very quickly. So, where are we when it comes to monitoring? Well, effectively, we're in this situation. Going back to that opening kind of uh, quote, we are defeating warriors at the moment. We're not using our monitoring and analytics tools in the right way. So how do we improve? We need to move towards a situational awareness approach. We need to embrace a model called UDA. So what is situational awareness? Hands up anyone who's heard of situational awareness before? Okay, cool. So, situational awareness actually goes back to Sun Tzu. And he's kind of really teaching us about the art of war. He did make references to this. There's many definitions which I kind of looked at and the way I understand it is about understanding your situation as it kind of stands, to using monitoring tools to understand an event which is occurring in order to make the next decision. And this concept is still used by the US military, uh, military today. So it's actually used by the US Marines. It's in their training kind of manuals. They talk about having the right information at the right time on the battlefield to take the next action. If you think about it, that next action could be the last action if that information is not accurate. But another simple explanation is knowing what is going on so you can figure out what to do. That comes from Bill Smith. It doesn't actually, but it should have been his kind of quote here. It's about understanding what is going on so you can figure out what to do. The whole thing when it comes to DevOps, so is about speeding up this notion of situational awareness. So, a famous military pilot, US Air Force pilot, called John Boyd. Anyone heard of UDA before I go into this? One person? Okay. Two people. Okay, cool. Talked about there's a number of core factors which we need to do to speed up situational awareness. We need to be able to observe, orient, decide, and act. And let me explain that in a bit more kind of detail. So what we're talking about here is pull up a model, it's the ability to be able to, able to observe your current environment, understand what's going on, understanding unfolding circumstances very, very quickly. You're going to orientate yourself there. Basically your past experiences, your company, the nature of the problem which you're dealing with is going to shape the way you respond. So things like culture, things like traditions of your organisation, things like have I experienced this problem before, is going to shape the way you respond. This then comes into a decision. You can see there's a number of feed forward kind of loops here. You can decide on what you need to do to resolve that problem. This then comes back to form or to influence the way you think about that issue if it occurs again. When you act then, you're going to make a decision. What happens when you act is that the unfolding kind of situation which occurs afterwards, again, is going to influence the way you cope, the way you uh, handle that situation again in the future. And these two areas, or this kind of concept, monitoring and analytics is absolutely critical. There's another, another element which is absolutely critical here, which Steve mentioned right at the start of the session, automation. Because this starts to speed up this cycle. What you really want to do <coughs> is have events which have occurred before, you want to automate a response. And this UDA model applies across the enterprise. So this notion of feed forward, feedback cycles is critical to DevOps adoption. It goes beyond development and operations. It goes beyond DevOps. So feeding back information in regards to application performance back to the business, 
feeding forward information down to IT, making sure everyone understands why we're in this business, what our customers want, what performance they expect. So, I want to go on to three capabilities now to speed up this UDA model. Go a bit more in detail in regards to monitoring and analytics. To summarise this, there's three concepts or three areas which are actually vital to speeding up the UDA cycle. One, the ability to see all application interactions, be able to see end-to-end -end application performance. Number two, the ability to be able to act quickly when there's an issue. And number three, the ability to know how to optimise your software strategy to know. These all fit into optimising UDA. Okay? So let's start with C. Now, back in 2005, I had a dream about this concept of unified monitoring. What monitoring solution, I hoped at the time that the system centre was going to achieve this, which was the ability to monitor end user experience, applications, all the underlying infrastructure and databases. The number of players in the application performance management market now which are kind of moving in that, uh, that direction. So there's a number of concepts to the ability to be able to see end-to-end -end application performance. One, you need to be able to transaction, uh, trace all transactions. So when the, your customer initiates an interaction with an application, you need to be able to trace that transaction all the way through to the back-end database, data store, whether that's on-premises, or in a third party data centre. It's also about business transaction understanding as well. So as well as understanding the flow of that transaction, you want to know what that value of that transaction is. Is it a checkout transaction? Is it a log on transaction? Is it a product search transaction? Because if you're dealing with an application issue without that context, you don't know how important the issue is going to be to your business. You don't understand how important the performance is to your business. It's also about application topology and visualization. So it's about being able to map out dynamically these complex applications. It's about application monitoring also, so getting down into the application code. If there's an issue you want to identify very quickly, is it a component of the application? Is it a line of code in that application? I talked about some of the complexities there, different application languages. It's also about ensuring end user experience. And there's two sides to end user experience. There's real user monitoring in the application performance management world, and also synthetic monitoring. Both of these are actually required. So real user, you understand the real user performance. Synthetic monitoring, you're using time scripts to simulate a user from maybe different geographical uh, locations. It's also about going down into the infrastructure monitoring, understanding how a survey is performing and how that's impacting the application's performance and their user's experience. Going back all the way to the database, again whether that's on-premises or in a third-party environment. Then it's about the ability to be able to act very fast when there's issues. So, your monitoring console, or whatever monitoring solution you choose, should give you the ability to have business teams, development teams, and IT operations teams working together, looking at information in context. It should be easy to generate dashboards, which present information to different audiences. It's also about automation on emerging issues. So the ability to be able to respond to an event, and then you know, maybe spin up some more capacity, so cloud auto-scaling, all sorts of features. That's absolutely critical to a modern kind of monitoring solution. And then you also need to be able to compare application releases very, very quickly. Take release A and compare it to release B. What's been the improvement? What issues have we kind of introduced in regards to this? How has the end user's experience actually improved? And then finally, it is about no. So improving our approach to understanding how to optimise software strategy. Now, as my time as an analyst, I used to focus on this area of IT operational analytics. And when I used to ask people, define to me what IT operational analytics is about, I'd usually get one answer coming back to me. 
What was the answer? It was Splunk or Logfile Analytics. It's about understanding analytics from the log file. Now, there is a part, there is definitely a place for this. But sometimes the problem is with a log file is you've already committed information. That can be too late in today's world. That information's already happened, the events already occurred. Also, the quality of what gets put into a log file really depends on the application and who kind of developed it. I've seen some pretty shitty log files in my time with no information in there. <coughs> or there is information, but it doesn't tell me what the hell is going on. So that's an issue. So application-centric analytics is slightly different. So what we need to do is be able to understand performance of every single customer, every single user. We need to be able to understand engagement as well. When it comes to an application, again, if people are not using it, then why bother? It's also about optimizing the value this application provides. And there's different terminologies for what you can define as being kind of value. But the reality is, it's about, for many businesses, it's about increasing kind of revenue, increasing kind of profit, increasing market share. So when we talk about value, it's on those sorts of areas. And these are absolutely critical for optimizing this OODA loop. So to put into context, it's about having monitoring solutions or an analytics solution which is able to piece together these different elements to be able to see the performance of every transaction in that application. Be able to see the performance of every transaction and relate it to a particular customer. To understand the customer persona or whoever is using that application. Are they a gold customer? Are they a platinum customer? How much are they spending with us? How important are these customers to our business? And also understanding the actual value being generated by your application. So for a traditional e-commerce application, this could be the top products which are being sold by this e-commerce type app. These are all kind of critical elements. This is about situational awareness. It moves you away from just monitoring server application performance to actually monitoring and understanding what's really important, your customers and the way they're engaging with your applications and organization. It's also about optimizing continuous delivery. So I talked about the notion of DevOps and what it means to me. Fast release while maintaining quality. But how do you maintain quality? You need to understand how each release, you look at HubSpot 300 releases per day, how much of those releases are actually driving value to the business? Don't know. But you need to be able to assess and look at and analyze each release and understand how each release is A, potentially improving performance and availability and how it's increasing value to your company. And this is how then monitoring and analytics starts to translate into feedback, feed forward cycles in the organization. How it translates to UDA, because with this information then, we can start feeding down customer needs. So IT kind of understands those customer needs, understands why these applications are in place. And then it's about feeding back this information coming from monitoring analytics to optimize the way we deliver software. So, that's how I put it to you, how we kind of win. This is how we become victorious in our approach to IT. In summary, I want to finish with another person who knows about winning, Charlie Sheen. One of my favorite films. Um, measurement really equals monitoring and metrics. It is critical to any part of DevOps adoption. You have to go beyond MTTR when it comes to your metrics. When it comes to monitoring, it's about understanding end-to-end -end performance of what is, what's important, which is your software, which is your customers, consumers, or employees' experience. It's about understanding, and kind of what I want you to do is when you go back to your organizations, assess your current monitoring tools. Do they provide those capabilities? Go back to that OODA loop. Are they helping you to observe the environment, orientate yourselves, make the right decisions, enable you to act quickly? Do you work to optimize that loop in your organization?
that's what monitoring analytics should help you to do. And really, if you want to kind of boil it down to something similar, think about those three concepts. See, act, and know. See end to end performance. Act quickly to avoid emerging issues impacting your customers. And know, <coughs> focus on the right analytics to improve your approach to kind of your software strategy. And with that, thank you. Any questions? <laughs>
Unless you're prepared to go down the open source route in a serious way, it can actually become more expensive. We've all talked today about EL ELK stack for analytics. Yes, it's possible. And you've seen a lot of companies move to ELK because Splunk's potentially too expensive. But in that respect, um, you're spending time and effort and resources to set up open source within your organization. Uh, these solutions for uh, okay, these solutions for logging, monitoring, they become uh, really expensive when we go to the billions of requests per day. Uh, how this is actually deal with? Because when you go to that scale, normally it's easier to go for an uh, in-house solution, as they say. How the companies that actually provide this monitor are going to tackle this in the future? Because we have every day you wonder more things and how we tackle this because the cost is becoming really, really expensive. So, it's a, it's a really good question. So I'm going to, well, one, one thing I'll say, you know, I think I'll go today. How can Netflix afford yeah. that dynamics is what you're really going to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, with, with, with great scale comes great discounts. <laughs> <laughs> Which is absolutely true, yeah. But look, in our world today, we're taught that and you can't ignore any data transaction, you can't ignore any piece of data. Because any piece of data, you can turn that into information, potentially it's going to offer you some insight. So it's about collecting all data. And so if you listen to anyone talk about analytics, it's like that's the first point they'll make. What they don't make is the fact that this can become very expensive. You need to put that data into some form of economical kind of storage. Which, if you're looking at an off-the-shelf solution, then that can potentially be expensive if you're looking at traditional models and the way they price. What we're starting to see now is that there's a number of analytics companies who are saying, look, this is not going to work. So we need to change the way we kind of do our licensing. So some of that we need to base it on value-based licensing, but some of that we have to focus on what's important. So have a look at understanding application transactions or those, in a sense, business transactions, and start to license based on that. Because then we're focusing, we're still saying that Data is valuable. We're focusing what's on important there. One last question. Uh, so, solutions like yours gather a lot of data, and turning that into information can be quite hard. Yeah. How do we go about dealing with the problem where monitoring everything means that we increase the haystack and not necessarily make it easier to find the needle? So, I can talk about our solution. I'm not going to plug it too much, but effectively, because we start understanding the, app, the business transaction of the application, we present information in context to the, to the right audiences very, very quickly. So if there's a performance issue, you can easily see what transaction or what impact that's having to uh, the business. When it comes to kind of monitoring, um, it's about sticking to the right areas, it's sticking to products where you can understand their user experience very quickly understand the underlying kind of application and the underlying infrastructure. It's about having these in context. Because if you are kind of trying to monitor everything and it's not in context, then it's in a lot of noise. That's what we see in many enterprises today. It's actually focusing on what's important. So I think, I think this comes back to the, 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 the DevOps model and, and how you're, are you doing the cultural and reorganizing your change? Why is everything in one big bucket? Why don't I have product team one, product team two, product team three, product team four? And the monitoring is set up so that you're seeing the alerts that are relevant to your product team. So first of all, we're taking that big haystack and splitting it up into a whole bunch of product and or transaction specific haystacks. Um, and then it starts to talk about, you know, you start to talk about, or, you know, I hate to use the term machine learning because every monitoring vendor always is telling you they've got machine learning in all their sort of stuff. But, you know, there is like whole, whole winter's algorithms and stuff. You start to come into anomaly detection, you know, statistical analysis. And that's why people are paying, you know, if you, if you want a career tip, become a data scientist. They're paying big money to be data scientists these days. At the end of the day, you, you have to start putting some intelligence on top of it. It's the only way you can do it. Yeah. And you see a lot of uh, analytic solutions. They'll talk about as kind of Steve was saying about machine learning, and they'll say, you know, in the future, actually a great analytics solution will answer your questions for you. That's really what we're kind of looking to move towards. Today, a lot of the analytics solutions on the market, you still need to ask the right questions. So, 
that's kind of what we're moving towards. But you know, when any organisation talks to you about machine learning, be very careful about that kind of phrase. I'm going to have to wrap it up here because the food is actually being, <coughs> being served. So thank you very much to uh, John from Apple Dynamics. <laughs> to ask before you all dash out of the room, so sit down. Um, he's desperate for a loose, I'm going to drag this out now. Does anybody in the room have solid experience with either sort of urban code, blade logic, um, CA release, or any of those enterprise level suites? Anyone want to put their hands up? Good knowledge of that? It's just a, a, a couple of questions have come up for the CI panel, which is the, the second panel in the afternoon, um, and they're around sort of those those sort of enterprise suites. And I've honestly put a hands up that none of us have much experience with those enterprise suites. So if you'd like to join the panel for the uh, for the uh, in the middle after lunch, should you put your hand up? If anybody feels that they can have something to contribute, even if they don't necessarily want to be on the whole panel, it's not an area that, that any of us have particularly dealt with. So. You know, if anybody wants to jump onto that, that panel and the CICD panel, which is the second panel after lunch, that would be great. Um, come and see me. Um, lunch, uh, you have a choice. There is a curry bar that has chicken tikka masala and a vegetarian, uh, vegetarian curry. Then there is 